Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Today on the Hero Quest Restoration Project, we are going to be painting some FEMA. And yes, I pronounce it FEMA. You can all tell me in the comments that I'm pronouncing it incorrectly. There are two things I was going for with these FEMA. First of all, this miniature I love, but it really does look like something out of a Masters of the Universe cartoon. To me, it really screams Saturday morning television. So what I was looking to do with the paint scheme for these was try and get some of that Saturday morning animated style. That means bold colours, really dark shading, just to make it look like something that you might have seen on the television when you were a kid. The second thing is, in the game of Hero Quest, the FEMA were presented as green. They were part of the green set of miniatures and were always really thought of as being green. I always thought of them as green skins like the orcs and the goblins. But the fact is, FEMA aren't actually really green. And if we look at this image on the back of the Keller's Keep mission book, we can see they are actually a more fleshy, browny, earthy sort of a colour. I wanted to keep something of the green about mine, but I didn't want to just paint them in bright, vibrant greens, and I didn't want to make them look too much like green skins. So to get around that, I thought I would do some washes where I would combine different shades with a little bit of green to get different hues. So we're doing three different tones here for the skin, and I have started by base coating the miniature with two coats of Rakarth flesh. And then for our first one, we're using Seraphim Sepia and the Thonian Camo Shade. And what I'm doing here is two parts Seraphim Sepia to one part Thonian Camo Shade. And I'm coating the whole miniature with a thin coat of that. And to be honest, I probably went a little too heavy with the green still in all cases here. Maybe I should have gone three parts Seraphim Sepia to one part Thonian Camo Shade. Maybe even four parts. And that's something I might experiment with with my femurs from Keller's Keep. For the second miniature, we're doing exactly the same thing, except we're using two parts Agrax Earthshade to one part Athonian Camo Shade. And again, I think there's just going to be a little bit too much green in here for what I was really going for. Regardless, all of these miniatures will eventually get two coats of the wash. For our third miniature, we're using Reichland Flesh Shade with Athonian Camo Shade. And again, it is a two to one mix. And this is the one that probably came out closest to the browny, slightly green tinged skin look that I was going for. But even then, I could probably have gone a little bit heavier with the Reichland Flesh shade. Once those first coats have dried, we're going to use some Pallid Witch Flesh. And all we're going to do at the moment is we are going to paint in the teeth. And the reason we're painting in the teeth now is because we're going to apply a second wash in a moment. And I want that wash to go over the teeth so it sort of dribbles down, creates like a gum line, a transition between the fleshiness of the flesh and then the toothiness of the tusks. With the teeth dry, we are going to our second coat of wash. So here we are putting our Seraphim Sepia and Athonian Camo Shade wash on this particular miniature. We're using exactly the same two to one mix. We're getting it over everything, including the teeth we have just painted. And once this second coat is dry, the skin is finished. And here they are. Here we have our three different skin tones. They're not vastly different, but as you can see, we have Seraphim Sepia on the left, Agrax Earthshade in the middle, and Reichland Flesh Shade on the right. And I do think Reichland Flesh Shade came out the best. We are now going back to our Pallid Witch Flesh, and we're going to do two things here. First of all, we are going to highlight the teeth, just the very tips of the tusks. And we are also going to paint in the toenails. And at this point, you're going to start seeing some of that really strong uh, shading and definition I was talking about to sort of get that Saturday morning cartoon feel. We're now going to Ogre in Camo, and all we're going to do here is on the ridges on the tail, we are going to do a little edge highlight on each of those ridges. And also there are some nodules on the club tail, and we're just going to highlight the tops of those lumpy areas. With that done, we are switching to Zandri Dust and we are going to paint all of the leather straps on the miniature. And those straps go from the armor plate on the front, up over the shoulders, down the back, and then around the waist. And the armor that the female wear is part of the reason I think this miniature really looks like something out of a Saturday morning cartoon. 
we're also going to paint the axe handle with Steel Legion Drab. You may be able to get away with one coat here, but two thin coats is probably better. And of course, you can use any browns you want here. You can change to a much stronger, darker brown if you want. Next up, we are switching to Balthazar Gold, and we are going to paint every piece of metal on this miniature, except for the head of the axe with that gold. So the plate on the front, the plates on the shoulders, the wristbands, there is an anklet, the small amount of chainmail hanging down from the front part, that all gets a coat of this. And then we are going to, of course, Agrax Earthshade. That Agrax Earthshade is going to go over all of the gold, all of the brown. It's going to knock down the colors. It's going to bring out the definition. It's going to do recess shading. And it's also going to set us up to do some high contrast highlighting in a moment where I will pick out the most raised details with a really bright color to really emphasize the shaded areas. And hopefully, capture that sort of cartoon style that I'm hoping to get here. Of course, when you are applying the Agrax Earthshade, you don't want it to splash all over the skin that you've already painted, so you need to be a bit careful there. But I do want the Agrax Earthshade to go all the way to the edges and create a nice defining line. Once the Agrax is dry, we're going back to Zandri Dust and we are going to pick back out all of the leather straps. We're going to revive the color, but also to emphasize those shaded areas. And you can see that as I am applying the Zandri dust, I'm leaving a line around the little rivets on the armor, and I'm leaving strong lines in the recesses. And now I'm going to liberate a gold, which is a really bright, shiny gold. And I'm going to apply this to the gold armor. So I am picking out all of the raised details, all of the ridges, but making sure I leave those really strong recessed shaded areas. And you're gonna get a really strong contrast between the really bright gold and that very coppery dark gold in the recesses. And hopefully that should make all the detailing on the armor pop. And then we are switching to lead belcher and we are going to paint the head of the ax with that. Just a nice even coat as a base. And then we're going to coat the head of that ax with Nuln Oil. We want a thin coat of Nuln Oil over the whole thing. And we want to make sure it goes into the recesses. And we also want it to make a nice, strong, defining line between the head of the ax and the handle of the ax. We're now switching to Pallid Witch Flesh and we're going to do the eye. We're going to start by just dotting in the eye with the Pallid Witch Flesh. So just using a thin brush, thinning down the paint a little bit and taking care. When that's dry, I'm going to dot some Cassandora yellow shade over that white and that's going to turn the eye a nice milky yellow color. And then finally, we are going to line in the pupil with some Abaddon black. And again, thin down the paint, take your time, brace the miniature, try and be as neat and precise as possible. And if you take your time with it, you should hopefully end up with something that looks a little bit like this. And you can see in this close up how I'm using really thick lines and shading around the raised areas to accentuate that comical style, that cartoon style that I want to get. And now finally we are going back to lead belcher just to finish off the head of the axe. We are going to apply lead belcher to the flat surfaces, leaving the shading in the recesses just to brighten it back up and complete the look. Once this is done, the only other thing to do is paint the flagstone base on the miniature, which I'm not doing in this video because I have got a completely separate video in my hero quest playlist where I show you exactly how I painted the flagstones for these miniatures. So the only thing left to do is show you what they all look like side by side and here they are ready to battle any pesky adventurers. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you've enjoyed it, please consider pressing the like button. If you've really enjoyed it, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully I will see you all again very soon. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye.